Hi, it's time for chapter six of A Mouse Called Wolf. Chapter six is titled A Lure. A lure is something that is used when you're fishing. You can put it on the end of a hook to attract fish. You might use something else to lure people into doing something. Um, you would use something that would make them want to come to you or make them want to come to a certain place. Though they could not have known it, Mrs. Honeybee and Mary Mouse had something in common. Both were widows. Mr. Honeybee had died peacefully of heart failure many years ago, and the heart of Mary's mate had failed, not at all peacefully, after an unfortunate encounter with the cat. But in another way, Mrs. Honeybee and Mary were not at all alike. Mary didn't miss her husband in the least. Mrs. Honeybee missed hers very much. Mary had her favorite young child at home with her. Mrs. Honeybee's children were middle-aged and lived far away, so she seldom saw them or her grandchildren. In short, Mary was not lonely, but Mrs. Honeybee was. For a while, the ginger cat had given her someone to talk to. But now the animals seemed to have become a nervous wreck. The kitchen door needing oiling, and each time Mrs. Honeybee opened it, it gave out a mouse-like squeak. Whereupon the cat would leap from its basket and dash out through the cat flap. Perhaps because of the piano player's loneliness, many of the tunes that Wolf listened to were rather sad sounding ones. But one morning he was awakened by the sound of a rather lively tune. What's more, the lady was singing as she played. In fact, Mrs. Honeybee, who talked to herself a lot, had given herself a good talking to. Jane Honeybee, she said severely, you are becoming a miserable old woman and it shows in your choice of music. The next thing you know, you'll be playing the funeral march. You should count your blessings, my girl. How many other people do you suppose are lucky enough to have a singing mouse in their house? Why none? So why don't you choose a happy piece of music to teach your mouse? Then it can sing to you and cheer you up. She thought for a while and then she smiled and began to play and sing a song that she remembered singing as a small girl. I'm gonna try my best. I don't know this song, so I'll do the best I can. Come on everyone, sing and dance and run, making friends and having a lot of fun. Even if it's raining and the skies are gray, nobody's complaining, it's a lovely day. Come on everyone, sing and dance and run, making friends and having a lot of fun. There, said Mrs. Honeybee, when she had played and sung the song several times, you should have gotten it in your head by now. The tune, I mean, not the words, Mouse. And she stood up, smiling to herself at the ridiculous idea of a mouse putting words to a song. But that is exactly what Mouse now spent a long time doing. That was a happy tune, wasn't it, Mommy? He said, once the lady had left the room. She doesn't sing half as well as you do, dear, said Mary. And of course, I couldn't understand the words. I'll make some up for you, said Mouse, said Wolf. That evening, as Mrs. Honeybee sat down at her piano, she heard that voice again, somewhat muffled since it was coming from the depths of the mouse hole. Though of course she could not understand the words Wolf had composed and was now trying out on his mother. And they were, Merry mice are we, Mommy Mouse and me, hear me sing this lovely old melody. You may chance to see us, lady of the house, Wolfgang Amadeus and mom, who's Mary Mouse. Mary Mice are we, Mommy Mouse and me, hear me sing this lovely old melody. 
When Wolf finished singing, he was startled by a sudden sharp noise. Peering cautiously out of the hole, he saw that the lady was sitting on the piano stool, clapping her hands together loudly. And there's Mouse. There's Wolfgang Amadeus Mouse singing, and the lady was happy to hear him, so she clapped for him after she heard him sing. Bravo, Mouse, said Mrs. Honeybee. You sing twice as well as I do. If only you would come out of your hole and climb up here on the piano, then I could accompany you as you sing. Silly old woman, she went on to herself, accompanying a singing mouse. What a crazy idea. But then the idea of a mouse singing is crazy anyway. Yet this one does. And it does beautifully. One thing's obvious. I must make friends with him or her, him. I somehow think, and I have a feeling the other bigger one may be his mother. Now what's the best way to make a friend of a mouse? Why food, of course, but what sort? Then Mrs. Honeybee remembered hearing somewhere that mice are especially fond of chocolate, as indeed she was herself. She got up and went across the living room to a small table. On it stood a tin in which she kept sweets. From the tin, she took out a packet of chocolates. From the packet, she took out one chocolate and then put the rest back in the tin and closed the lid. She went over to the grand piano and to avoid bending, carefully dropped the one chocolate piece beside the wheel of the piano's left front leg outside the mouse hole. Then she left the room, shutting the door behind her. Before she went to bed, Mrs. Honeybee couldn't resist going back to the living room. They probably haven't eaten it yet, I don't suppose, she said. She turned on the light to see if the chocolate was still there. It wasn't. Good boy, she said softly. There's plenty more where that came from. If only you'll come out and sing for me. I hope you enjoyed that chapter. Would you be lured out of your home for some chocolate like Wolfgang Amadeus was? I might be. Think about what could you use to lure someone to do what you want for you? Mrs. Honeybee used chocolate. I think that was a pretty good idea.